All right, welcome back. Uh, we're on to the next uh, topic for this unit, which is all about potential energy. Um, so you probably have learned a little bit about potential energy in the past. You might remember that we say that potential energy is any kind of stored energy. And so um, there are many different ways that energy can be stored. Uh, uh, for example, we can have things like stored chemical energy. And you can think about um, chemical energy, for example, being stored in the food that you eat or in the gasoline that might power your car. Um, another example might be, for example, electrical stored energy. Uh, for example, something like you might find in a, in a battery or in an, in an electric, like a static charge. Um, and uh, another example would be something like uh, elastic. So you can store a bunch of energy in an elastic material, like for example, by stretching out a bungee cord or when you jump on a trampoline and all the springs um, stretch out and store up that energy before they fling you back up in the air. Now in this class, we're mostly gonna focus on, not exclusively, but we're mostly gonna focus on gravitational uh, potential energy. And this is energy that is, uh, we say this is energy stored due to uh, the position of an object in a gravitational field. So, um, for example, this idea that if you have a heavy object, if you lift it up over your head, um, that object has more energy stored in it than when it did when it was lying on the ground. And if you don't believe me, uh, you could pick a bowling ball up and then drop it on your toe. And you'd recognize that all the energy that the bowling ball had stored in it when you were holding it up in the air got converted into kinetic energy. And then when that bowling ball hit your foot, it was able to do a whole bunch of work on your foot, which is probably really unfortunate. And so remember that work um, really is how energy transforms. So energy can be transformed by doing work. And if I wanted to say that maybe more simply, I could just say that a change in energy is equal to the work done. So energy can be transferred from one object to another, or it can be changed from one form to another, like that example of the bowling ball, as it falls down, uh, it's losing potential energy and gaining kinetic energy, um, and then it hits your toe and it transfers a bunch of that energy from the bowling ball itself into your toe, and that, those processes are, are what we call work. So um, gravitational potential energy, uh, we define, we took a look at this last video, but the potential energy is of an object is gonna equal mgh where M is the mass of the object, G is the grav field, which on Earth is right around 9.8, and H is the height. Now, that seems really straightforward, but there's one thing about potential energy you have to be careful about, which is gravitational potential energy is always measured relative to some reference point. So um, maybe just as a quick example of that, let's take a look at this here. So I've got a, um, a dog on a skateboard, obviously, and uh, as it goes back and forth, you can see here that as the dog goes back and forth over on the side here, you can see what's happening with its kinetic and its potential energy. And we're gonna get into more of this later when we talk about conservation energy. You can even notice what's happening to the total energy here, this bar in yellow. Well, as the dog swings back and forth, um, you'll notice, you may notice something that the potential energy never actually quite drops to zero. And the only reason for that is because we've decided to treat the ground as our zero potential energy point, which um, might make sense for some reasons. Like for example, if the dog were to fall off the roller coaster and fall all the way down to the ground. But in this case, we might say, well, wait a second, it doesn't really make sense to use the ground as our zero point. Why don't I just drag this zero line up here and make the bottom of the roller coaster the zero point? That's like the furthest down the dog can possibly get. So maybe that makes more sense to have as our zero point. 
And all I want to point out is that this zero line that I've got here, you can decide, you can set it to be anywhere, right? You can set it to be the ground, you can set it to be the bottom of the roller coaster. It doesn't do anything to affect the dog's behavior. It's still going just as fast when it reaches the bottom. It still goes up to the same height on both sides. I mean, heck, if you wanted to, you could even put the zero line up here at the top and you get a weird thing like negative potential energy. And that might not be super useful, but the point is, is it doesn't really matter where you choose as long as you're certain of um, the point you've chosen. So um, as an example here, we got a, a textbook sitting on a table and uh, the book is lifted 0.8 meters, a very heavy textbook, 15 kilograms, that's, yeah, that's no joke. So um, being lifted above the table, um, how much potential energy you have does, it, does it have with respect to the table and with respect to the floor? So I'm just gonna draw a little picture here because I love pictures and um, this is a very hefty textbook. And so it starts off and the table is 1.2 meters tall and we're gonna lift this textbook up here so that it's another 0 0.8 meters above the ground. Okay, so how much uh, potential energy does it have? Uh, we know that potential energy is equal to MGH which, if we're talking about with respect to the table, it's only 0.8 meters above the table. So it would be 15 times 9.8 times 0 0.8, which gives us uh, right around 120 joules. However, with respect to the floor, if so if we were to drop this textbook down and it were to hit the table, it would have 120 joules of energy that it could hit the table with. But if we dropped it, instead of to hit the table, we actually dropped it all the way down until it hit the floor, how much energy is available for that textbook? So MGH again equals 15 times 9.8. In this case, the total height would be two meters. And so the energy here would be right around uh, 294 joules. Okay, so we're gonna look at just one last example. Now I know I said we're gonna spend most of our time talking about um, gravitational potential energy, but we can also think about, uh, since we learned a little bit about elastic forces, it's maybe worth just taking a look at what happens um, when we have elastic potential energy. If uh, an archer pulls a bowstring with an average force of 240 newtons while drawing uh, the arrow back a distance of 0.2 meters, calculate the potential energy of the bow arrow system. So they pulled back on the arrow, they're holding it, um, they've flexed the bow out, bow out by about 20 centimeters, they've used force to do it, Find the, um, the hint here is find the work done on the bow because the work done on the bow is all being stored as potential energy. So you'll remember before we said that um, work is a change in energy. And so what's happening in this case? Well, the archer is grabbing the arrow, exerting a force, pulling the drawstring back, and all of the work that they're doing is being turned really into potential energy stored in that arrow. So the change of potential energy would be equal to the work. And you might recall from last day that work is equal to force times distance. So since they use 240, an average force of 240 newtons, and they pull it back a distance of 0 0.200 meters, this works out to be about 48 joules of energy stored in that bow. Okay, that's it for potential energy.